Hello and welcome to LearnSBOM.com. Today we're taking a quick look at the Cyclone DX Python library. This is a library that facilitates SBOM generation, validation, vulnerability scans, and more for a Python project you'd want to create. This library doesn't run standalone, instead it's the backbone of applications like Jake and Cyclone DX for Python. We have previous videos covering these applications that utilize this library, so please take a look at those videos if you're interested. Today we're going to go through some of the areas of the library that can be utilized for your application. The library supports almost all Python versions, with Python 3.6 being an exception due to the JSON schema library not having support. The library can be installed in a couple different ways. The easiest way being the command line with pip, where the command is pip install cyclone dx python library. Something that looks like this will be shown when you install it. The library also has full IDE support and can also be found on Anaconda's Conda Forge if you are looking to use Anaconda with your project. Now let's take a quick look at what we can do to generate an SBOM and output an SBOM utilizing the library. Through a quick review, the easiest way to understand this and some of the features is through the unit tests that are provided. Taking a look at the library here, as specified, you could either create a bomb yourself programmatically or generate a bomb from their implementation as you can see here. The easiest way to understand how a bomb gets generated through the library is taking a look at some of the Jake source code as mentioned before. We do have a previous video going into detail of Jake's open source implementation, but for now, let's take a look at how they utilize the Cyclone DX library parsers to generate a bomb. So as you can see here, they choose from one of Cyclone DX's Python libraries, many different parsers, and use that to create their bomb instance here. Based on what parser gets selected and what directory gets used as the input source here, a bomb is generated as such and an output to a file as specified by the Jake code. So now let's take a look at how a bomb is output. Outputting a bomb instance is a pretty straightforward process as well. Here I navigated to the unit tests of the library to demonstrate two of the ways we could go about using a bomb instance. It should also be noted that adding some extra packages like XML diff, LXML, and JSON schema was needed. So taking a look at the end-to-end -end tests here, we can see how a bomb can be converted to string to be used in some way for the project. So here I'm using PyCharm, and I could set a breakpoint right about here in one of the tests that shows us that we could use our output as a string. So on line 52 here, I'm going to set a breakpoint, and then I'm going to run the unit tests. And then I could step through here to see how our bomb JSON variable is the bomb in string format. So this could be something I could use for a Python project later in the future. So another way a bomb can be output is if I were to redirect the output to a file. This file can either be XML or JSON, and for this example we're going to use JSON. So the library uses a method from the outputter that's called output to file. And we're going to specify our file name as demo.json for this example. So now I could use that same breakpoint to step through again here. It's going to pass the output to file. So we have passed that line 52. We're going to go down and see if we have a demo.json file. So 
So as we can see on the left here, a demo.json file was output, and it should look something similar to the string that we saw previously. So it should also be noted that the library supports vulnerability scanning and impact analysis on a given bomb instance. This is also something we could see in Jake and helps print information on the vulnerability, CVSS scores for whether or not the vulnerability has a high impact. And it's worth noting that this library has extensive support for vulnerability scans and a decent amount of unit tests that wish to pick up on these vulnerabilities in the sample bombs that they have listed. So overall, the library continues to support modern Python versions and provides extensive functionality towards generating and scanning SBOMs in a Python project. The classes and methods in the library are lightweight and easily ready to be integrated into any Python project. The library allows you to have control over what vulnerabilities to check for, how to score them, and their impact on a project. It's also worth noting their schema support for both JSON and XML SBOM formats. And if you want more information, make sure you take a look at Jake, Cyclone DX for Python, or Cyclone DX library GitHub pages. Thanks for watching and take care. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here. And then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye bye.